Namaste Saraswati Deve, Gorvani Prachari Ne Yavisesa Sunyavadi, Asyatya De Satarine, Panchakalpa Tarugas Chat, Kripa Sindhu Veva Chapatita Nam Bhavana Gyo Vaishnava Gyo Namaha Namaha. Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadar Har Sivasani Gorba. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Chalasi Vikrame Baladim Abhuta Vamana Paranakani Janita Jana Pavana Kesha Vadrita Vamana Rupa Jaya Jagadish Hare. Chalasi Vikram, Chalasi Vikramane, Balim Abhutta Vamana, Paranaka Nida Janitan Jana Pavana, Kesha Vadrita Vamana Rupa, Jaya Jagadish Hare. Today is the divine appearance day of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, known as uh, Sri Vamana Dev, the dwarf Brahma, the manifestation of the Lord's. Mercy incarnation in the form of unlimited beauty. As the Lord uh, exhibits various types of opulences, he has six outstanding opulences, his wealth, his fame, his reputation, his uh, strength, his uh, beauty, his knowledge, his renunciation. So these are the uh, main opulences of the Lord. And when he comes in his different incarnations, he uh, exhibits one or more of these opulences. And in many times, a particular opulence is outstanding. In the case of Vamana Dev, he is known for his outstanding beauty. The demigods in the higher planets were attacked by... Uh, Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj had recently been defeated by the demigods and was almost on the verge of death. The spiritual master Sukracharya revived him and gave him not only uh, renewed life, but a lot of mercy. And then he served his spiritual master Sukracharya very nicely. And the Lord Sukracharya was very pleased and therefore he empowered Bali to do wonderful things. And after coming back from almost being killed, he reattacked the heavenly planets. And this time the demigods, they were about to defend themselves but they saw the prowess of Bali. Bali had successfully worshipped his spiritual master. The important point in this particular narration, as it's described in this particular section, is that when one worships the spiritual master nicely, pleasingly, and regularly, one can become some power to do wonderful things on behalf of the Lord. So with this in mind, uh, Bali fearlessly with his armies attacked the heavenly planets. Uh, Indra could understand that they would, that this was going to be a difficult battle. But Brihaspati told him, this is not the time. Bali is too powerful. We should hide. So taking the advice of their spiritual master Brihaspati, the demigods disappeared from the heavenly planets and Bali and his whole army and his, all his subjects, they took over the heavenly planets and all of the other planets, lower, middle and upper planets. Um, and this caused great difficult because now the demigods had no abode and they had no power. 
So they were thinking what to do. The, the mother of the demigods, Aditi, she was very distressed and hearing about how her sons were disenfranchised from their position in the heavenly planters. So she prayed to her good husband, Kashapa, and he gave her a particular vrata to perform. And she performed this vrata very nicely. And by performing this vrata very nicely, the Supreme Personality of God, Lord Vishnu, appeared to her in his four-handed form and granted her any benediction she wanted. She prayed that, my dear Lord, please incarnate in order as my son and come and relieve the distress we are all feeling now that the devas have been thrown out of the heavenly planets. So the Lord granted her benediction by smiling and then disappearing. And then later on, she had a son and that son was the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Vamanadev himself. And the Lord appeared in a most amazing way, actually. He was a dwarf, not simply a, <laughs> a uh, ordinary personality. He appeared in a very small way, but he was so beautiful. And when he appeared in his form, uh, everyone was amazed. So his mother, and others saw him and they saw that he was so beautiful, but just a little boy and he didn't have anything, the Lord appeared. And so various types of great personalities, including Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva and others, they all came to grant the Lord various types of gifts. Um, Brihaspati, uh, offered sacred dead. Kishapa, his father, offered him a straw belt. Mother Earth gave him deer skin. Um, demigod of the moon, I gave him a, a, a danda. Aditi gave him clothes for his underwear. The, the, the presiding deity of the heaven gave him an umbrella. Brahma offered him a water part. The seven sages offered him pusa grass. Sarvaswati offered him raksha. Rudraksha beads. Kubera offered him a sacred thread. Bhagavati, the wife of Shiva, uh, gave him um, gave him a, his first alms in the begging palm. Lord Brahma, Lord Brahma's effulgence surpassed the entire universe. It was so beautiful. Now the Lord had a mission, and he immediately left to go to the arena of Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj was there with many of his associates. They were performing sacrifice. Although Bali Maharaj was a demon, he was very much inclined to give charity to Brahmanas. So the Lord appeared as a little Brahmana on the plea of begging charity from Bali Maharaj. Brahmana, seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead, could understand that he was a very special person and start glorifying Vamana's auspicious appearance in his assembly. The Lord had come to beg charity. Bali Maharaj, after washing the feet of the Lord and offering him very nice gifts, said to the Lord, you have come and you are a Brahman. I am very much inclined to give charity to a Brahman, especially a Brahman like yourself, so please, the Lord immediately started to glorify the family of uh, of uh, Sukhacharya. The Sukhacharya was the grandson of Prahlad Maharaj, and uh, Virochana was his father. All great personalities, and Bali, of course, uh, the father of uh, Prahlad Maharaj was Saranya Rani Kashipu, and his brother was. Hiran Yaksha, Bhavana Dev starts to glorify the prowess of Hiran Yaksha, who offered the Lord a very severe fight. 
And also his brother, Harani Kashipu, was killed by Lord Vishnu himself. And then the Lord in so many different ways glorified all of the family members in Bali's line. But the Lord continues to glorify one verse after another. The glorification goes on. Um, it's interesting how the Lord prepared the heart of uh, Bali Maharaj. And finally, pleased by the words of Bali Maharaj, he offered him anything, whatever you want. But the Lord disappointed Bali Maharaj and said, just give me three steps of land. Bali Maharaj was, was shocked. He, he said, I'm prepared to, prepared to offer you anything you want. And you're only asking for three paces of land and you're so small. What will that do? In Bali Maharaj says, anyone who approaches me should never be in want. So continue to consider what you have asked for and ask something substantial. The Lord said, without being content, no one can be happy, even if he possesses the entire property of the universe. Everyone tries to possess more and more. Therefore, everyone is dissatisfied and unhappy. Vamanadev indicated that if I'm not satisfied with three steps of land, then what can I hope to get more? What would I hope to, that getting more would do? Bhamana gives the examples of many great kings who had the whole world but were never satisfied. He says, when one can never satisfy the senses simply by material acquisition. The senses can only be satisfied by devotion to the Lord. And then the Lord went on and said, a Brahmana who is satisfied with whether it, whatever is provincially obtained is, is increased in spiritual power by the spiritual potency of a dissatisfied Brahman decreases. The way of happiness is to be fully satisfied with one, what one absolutely needs. Bali agrees, smiles, and again offers the Sukracharya, the guru of, of uh, Bali Maharaj is there. He's seeing what is happening and he's becoming disturbed. He knows that this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he's come to take everything away. Sukracharya warns Bali Maharaj that, you know, you haven't chanted Om before you have offered your promise to give him anything. Therefore, you can rescind your promise and you can simply give him something else. The Lord said, I only want three steps of land. So three steps of land, but Bob, but Sukracharya could understand that this is the Supreme Lord. And he told, he told, he told Bali Maharaj that by offering him three steps of land, the first step he will take the lower and middle planets and the second step, he will take the upper planets. So how will you be able to fulfill your vow? Bali was so in, explained that, you know, once a promise is given, it should never be rescinded, especially to a Brahmana. But Sukracharya says, charity, sacrifice, austerity, food of activities are possible for one who is competent to earn his livelihood properly. They are not possible for one who cannot maintain himself. The Shastras enjoin that one has, if one has no money, one should divide all he has for religion, reputation, for, uh, for opulence, for sense gratification, and for family maintenance. This is how money should be divided. Sukrasharya instructs Bali, giving evidence from a particular Shastra saying that a promise is truthful preceded by the word Om only. And, and untruthful if not. And then he's, he's 
because Sukracharya is concerned because he is maintained by Bali and then he will no longer be able to maintain, be maintained by Bali. So he's thinking if Bali gives this promise to this, to the Lord, then what will be my situation? And then he goes on to say, if one purposely adopts a professional as a beggar, he is supposed to be dead while breathing. According to another interpretation, such a man of falsity should be killed while breathing. Shukrachari states ways that falsity is never condemned. There's different ways that you can use falsity and it is considered to be acceptable. Bali Maharaj, he's listening to everything. And then he says, he says, there are two kinds of elevated devotees. One is Sadhana Siddha, one is Kripa Siddha. Bali Maharaj is understood to be received the highest perfection because he, ha he has done devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And then this is a very important verse that is quoted by Bali Maharaj which is very much relevant to us in the particular sense. And he says, Mother Earth feels very overburdened when she carries even one person who is a liar. Mother Earth says, I can bear any type of burden except a liar. In Kali Yuga, lying is a common affair. Bali Maharaj says, I don't fear death as much as I fear cheating a Brahmin. I've decided to give Dev the gifts that he has asked for. Since our money and possessions do not last, but will somehow or other be taken away, as long as in our, they were in our possession, better to use them for a noble cause, in this case, to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Bali goes on glorifying the, the principle of giving charity to a saintly person and how by refusing such charity, one, one is doomed to various types of suffering. And uh, what is the word? Uh, being ousted from all good association. Sukracharya doesn't want to hear it. He still understands that this is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And he knows that he's going to lose everything. So Sukracharya says he curses his, his, his uh, disciple. Bali Maharaj fixed on offering whatever the Lord wants. And then he grants it. The Lord promised, he said, I promise land. And Vamana Day begins. And then he takes his first step. <laughs> and in his first step, he co covers all of the lower planets and the middle planets. With another step, he kicks the hole in the universe and the universal covering. And the waters of the Ganges come from the higher planets and fall and mix with the, with the Ganges and fall into the lower area. Well, this is interesting how this particular pastime brought the Ganges. When Lord Brahma saw that the Ganges was falling, he, he, uh, he took that water um, because it had touched the feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and the Ganga water had washed the Lord's lotus feet. So that's how the Ganges became so glorious as being sacred. Because when Vamana Dev kicked a hole in the universe, this Ganges water poured upon his feet, and that water came eventually down to earth. That was later on. And eventually we understand that simply by bathing in a Ganges, all of one's uh, 
of reactions to sinful activities can be uh, uh, nullified. The demons who are also there, the followers of the Bali, uh, become very unhappy seeing what's happened. And then, but they also decide to glorify the truthfulness of Bali Maharaj. The demons then decide they're going to kill Vamanadev. So they take up weapons. But Bali Maharaj, he stopped him. And remember in the curse of Sukrachara, he called out the names of different de 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 demons and demand them to stop fighting. The demigods came at the same time and there was a battle, but Bali stopped the battle before. Finally, the Lord said to ba Bali Maharaj, you have offered me three steps of land. I have taken everything in two. Where does the third step go? Bali Maharaj, he is intelligent. He's fixed in his determination to grant the Lord the promise that he had given him. So he says, my dear Lord, place your third step upon my head. Before that time, what had happened was the Lord called for the, the, the ropes of Isuki, the mystical snake, and he came and tied up Bali Maharaj like a common criminal. Bali Maharaj was not at least disturbed by what was happening because he knew this was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And offering his head as the third step for the Lord, he, under, he, he became glorious. And then at that time, uh, Prahlad Maharaj came to see the, the activities. And then as mentioned here, Lord Brahma began to speak to the Supreme Personality of Godhead within the hearing of, of Prahlad Maharaj. Bali Maharaj's wife was very agitated to see what was happening to her husband. The demons, but the demons rejected the Lord's propriety, claiming proprietorship for themselves. Lord Brahma joins Prahlad Maharaj and the wife of Bali in asking mercy for, for Bali for, to the Supreme Lord. And the Lord showed his mercy after he's after putting his step on his third step on his head, the Lord granted him something that he never had granted anyone before. He gave Bali his own planet in the lower regions called Sutala. And the Lord said, not only will you be the proprietor of that planet, but I'll be there personally in my manifestation as Vamanade to become your personal door keeper. So the Lord was so pleased with Bali Maharaj for surrendering everything, even though, and he apparently disobeyed his spiritual master. But it says when the spiritual master is no longer acting on behalf of the Lord, then he becomes asara. Asara means useless. And therefore, he has no power anymore. The power of the spiritual master comes as he represents the Supreme Personality of God and, and everything he does and everything he says. But Bhagavad Sukaracharya actually fell from that position because he, he rejected the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead based on his own selfish, personal selfish interest. And therefore, Although it is said that one should never disobey the orders of one's spiritual master, Bali Maharaj understood that the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead were the real instructions, and therefore he rejected Sukaracharya. And because of that, the Lord not only gave him that planet in the lower planetary systems, but also, he also 
granted him the position as being one of the Mahajans, Brahma, Narada, Shiva, Prahlad, uh, Janaka, the four Kumaras, Yamaraj, um, who else? There are 12 Mahajans and Bali Maharaj is one of the Mahajans. That means although he was born in the demoniac family, well, actually he was coming from the line of Prahlad Maharaj, which were a line of Daityas or demons. Still, by the mercy of the Lord, he became glorious because he surrendered everything to the Lord. And as he's understood that he is the one of the greatest of all the Mahajans because he taught full surrender to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Not only did he surrender all his possessions, but he surrendered his own life to the Supreme Lord. And therefore we understand that he is glorious as a person who is qualified to give relevant spiritual guidance to anyone who takes shelter of Bali Maharaj. He is so glorious, although apparently siding with the demons. This is a beautiful pastime, how the Lord glorifies his devotee and at the same time recaptures the entire universe and brings it back into the hands of the demigods because the demigods are the Lord's representatives in order to maintain the universe. And many times the demons attack the heavenly planets and the demigods find themselves in difficulty. We see that situation when before Krishna appeared 5,000 years ago, the situation was the same. When the demons had fully taken over all the powerful positions on earth and were causing havoc to the saintly persons and at the same time the earth was overburdened with such military forces that it was time for Krishna to come and he did and yada yada hi dharmas yad glanir bhavati bharata bhutanam adharmas yad tadatvaram srijami aham pravitranayam sarunam vinasanaya chaduskitam dharma samstapanartayam Sambhavami yuge yuge. Krishna makes that statement in the Bhagavad Gita where he describes that whenever there is a significant rise or a rise in irreligion and at the same time an increase of irreligious people on earth, he comes. So you might ask, well, we have that situation at the present moment. How, why hasn't he come? But Prabhupada says he has come. He has come in the form of his holy name. The Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Kali Kale, Nama Rupa Krishna Avatar is an incarnation of Krishna in order to purify the world in this age of Kali. Kalir Dosha Nidi Rajan Asti Eko Maha Gun Kirtana Eva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Parambajat. The Lord manifests himself in the form of transcendental sound vibration in order to purify not only each and every individual, but also the atmosphere that has been polluted by the age of Kali. This is a very difficult time to live in because it is polluted by so much sinful activity and very um, avaricious people who are claiming various powerful positions within society. So, yeah, therefore, there is an incarnation, and it's a very powerful incarnation. It is non-different than Krishna. If Krishna were to appear personally in his transcendental form, he, uh, he has, then we could understand that his, his name is equally as powerful as his personal appearance in his personal form. So we understand that the Lord's holy name is the personal manifestation of the Lord within the transcendental realm of sound. So this is a wonderful pastime. Today is the appearance of Ramana Dave. We should 
read this, these uh, verses from the uh, from the eighth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, starting with verse chapter number seventeen. Uh, even earlier, which sets the stage for the appearance of Amade. There's a very beautiful description of the Lord's transcendental form and how he appears in so many glorious ways to accept the worship of his devotees. Okay, so we'll stop there and see if there's any comments or questions. This particular pastime is full of a lot of relevant philosophical teachings that are very much applicable to our execution of devotional service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Um, and devotees, if you have any questions, comments, realizations, please unmute yourself and ask. Otherwise you can type it in the chat box and I'll read it for you. Thanks, Hare Krishna. No questions? Okay, today is also the uh, appearance of Srila Jiva Goswami, one of the six Goswamis of Vrindavan. Vande Rupa Sanatano Ragu Yago Sri Jiva Gopal Ko. Uh, Jiva Goswami is one of the most, is not one, but is the most uh, proficient writer of Sanskrit verses. He has composed over 400,000 verses on the glories of the process of pure devotional service. His most famous writings are the Sandarbhas, Tattva Sandarbha, Bhagavad Sandarbha, Priti Sandarbha, Paramatma Sandarbha, Krishna Sandarbha, uh, Bhakti Sandarbha, and also Kramya Sandarbha. These are the, this is the entire science of bhakti explained from different angles of vision in a very philosophical way by Jiva Goswami. It's his most glorious work, along with Gopal Champu, a very uh, interesting and very unique presentation on the glories of Krishna and Sri Vrindavan from his appearance all the way to his disappearance and done in a very interesting way where two personalities, uh, Snigda, can't remember their names, but they are, they are professional eulogers. In Vedic society, there are people who are professing, professional eulogizers and they were, they are also great devotees of the Lord. And they are narrating all the glories of Lord Krishna's pastimes in a very, very beautiful way. It's very beautiful poetry, that whole, that whole particular uh, text. Um, so that's Jiva Goswami, another one of his great works, along with the Sandarvas, is Gopal Champu. It's called Gopal Champu. So today is his appearance day and Srila, Srila Prabhupada um, took shelter of the um, Radha Damodar temple in Vrindavan before he appeared in America. And uh, that is the temple of Jiva Goswami. Jiva Goswami established the Radha Damodar temple in Sri Vrindavan. Dham. And we can see Srila Prabhupada was also empowered to write much transcendental literature covering various, various forms of spiritual knowledge from the translations to the main scriptures to his own writings in various other works. So we see the connection between Srila Jiva Goswami and Srila, Srila Prabhupada. It appears that Prabhupada was empowered by Srila Jiva Goswami 
in the literary form of devotional service. Okay, so today is also Jiva Goswami's appearance day, along with the appearance day of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Vamana Dev. Thank you, Maharaj. The devotees, if you have any questions on um, either on Jiva Goswami or Vamandev's um, um, appearance day, please, I can ask. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I want to ask a question about um, uh, Vaman Dev's appearance day, appearance as in uh, was that the only reason uh, uh, to you know uh, to defeat Bali Maharaj uh, Vaman Dev appeared, was that the only reason uh, for, for his appearance? Um, to restore the demigods back into the power of their position in the heavenly planets. Okay. And also, also, also to acknowledge the Vrata of Aditi, who performed a very difficult sacrifice in order to get the mercy of the Supreme Lord. But when you go through it, you'll find there's many, many very interesting instructions. It's a bit surprising looking at the past time as in Bali Maharaj was, you know, uh, he was already an exalted devotee. Then uh, what was the reason that, you know, he was the cause for demigod suffering? And uh, he was the just, head of the, uh, he was the, he was the commander in chief of the demons. Yes. Yeah. But he was very much inclined to devotion to the Lord at the same time. Mm -hmm. Because many of the demons, not, not many, but some of the demons, they understood the importance of worshiping the Lord, although they were demons. <laughs> mm. So it, it is. We, also, we have the example of Hirani Kashipu, he worshiped Lord Brahma. Mm. We have the example of Ravana, he worshiped Lord Shiva. Mm. Yeah. We have the example of, uh, what's his name? Manasura, he worshiped Lord Shiva. Many of, this, mm. many of the demons, they worship great personalities like Brahma, Shiva, and even sometimes Vishnu. But yes. they're demons. But he came in a family of Pallad Maharaj. That was his good fortune. Mm. This pastime is always wonders me that you know one person can have the two extremes of the qualities, as in uh, he can be most dem and de demon uh, demonic qualities and also the divine qualities of you know worshiping Vishnu, who doesn't uh, give a material benefit like uh, worshiping other demigods like Ravan and Hiranyakashipu. They worship other demigods um, because they wanted something, but with Vishnu, it just, yeah, it's really nice to hear this pastime, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hey. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. <clears throat> Please accept my humble obeisances. I'm going to Shil Prabhupada. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, I was just uh, uh, wondering, like, in these nine devotional processes like Shravanam, Kirtanam, and uh, in the last one is Atmani Vedanam. So the Bali Maharaj uh, will come under Atmani Vedanam, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, he comes on Atmani Vedanam. And of the nine processes of devotional service, Sakyam and Atmani Vedanam are on the spontaneous platform. They're on Raganuga platform. The first seven can be performed either on Raganuga or on Sadhana Bhakti. But Sakya Ras, 
or becoming a friend of Krishna and Atmani Vedanam surrendering everything, these two were on spontaneous platform. And Bali Maharaj is the ex exhibits complete surrender to on all levels. He had complete faith in the Lord. Although the Lord came to him to take everything away from him, still he remained fixed on the Lord anyway. And he's glorious for, for not listening to Sukaracharya, although we understand that to disobey the spiritual master is to consider the one is one of the more grievous offenses. But he understood that when the spiritual master doesn't represent the Lord anymore, he is no longer in, in that position as a spiritual master. So, uh, Gurmara, so what uh, actually we can take from this pastime, like Vamana Deva's appearance um, as, a, as a neophyte, um, as a practicing uh, devotee? So, what actually um, we can take from this? I'm a little confused, Gurmara. That by surrendering everything, we're not the loser. <laughs> We like to surrender up to a certain point, but then we, we put up the fence and say, that's as far as I go. Yeah. But the Lord, the Lord knew that Bali had that inclination. So the Lord put him in a very, I mean, he, the Lord treated him quite heavy. You know, after he gave everything to the Lord, the Lord tied him up and just like a common, criminal and he didn't mind you have to understand he was very powerful too not only did he control everything but he was he had a wonderful family he had he had success on all on all levels probably. but when the lord came everything was changed so his faith in the Lord, his devotion to the Lord, and his surrender to the Lord made him glorious. So what we can take away from is that we should always be thinking, what else or how else can I surrender and make and become more and more Krishna conscious? Because the more we hold on to something in this world and in an attached way, we may have you can have, you can have a lot of material things. If you're attached to them, then it's material. If you're not attached to them, it's not, then you use them in the service of the Lord. So the attachment, Bali, although he had a lot, he wasn't attached to it. He was attached to serving the Lord and pleasing the Lord. He was attached to pleasing the Lord. So that should be our, our method. We should be attached to pleasing the Lord. Yes, good, Maharaj. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Srimati. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please exit. Shamala. No, this is Namrata. Uh, Namrata. Namrita. Oh, okay. Namrata. Namrata. Yes, Maharaj. Namrata. Okay. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Maharaj. Uh, so, my question was uh, related to the nine process of bhakti. So, um, can we uh, go on the advanced level even? by practicing one of the uh, uh, you know one of the process of bhakti like either by shravanam either by kirtanam or we have to uh, include everything within our bhakti and then only we can progress no that's mentioned in the, in the uh, seventh canto in one verse Prabhupada talks about that 
One can be perfect in Krishna consciousness by perfecting one of the nine process. But then there is, there isn't, there's one other consideration that must be included because the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra is the Yuga Dharma. One has to chant also along with maybe perfecting one or many of the other nine processes. One, if one perfects chanting, that's in and of itself is perfect. But if one perfects in one of the other eight processes of bhakti, then chanting also has to be included because it's the Yuga Dharma. But it's the means for self-realization in this age. Oh, okay, thank you, Marat. Uh, one more thing out of this uh, same Navda Bhakti. Uh, we have this Dasya, Dasya Bhav and uh, Sakya Bhav. So how can one be in a Dasya Bhav and at the same time have Sakya Bhav as well? Well, usually if you take it as a Bhav or a Ras, they're distinct. But in every of the rasas, dasya is there. No matter what rasa you want is in, dasya is always there because dasya means servitorship. So you serve the Lord as a friend, you serve the Lord as a parent, you serve the Lord as a lover. So the mood of service accompanies all of any of the other rasas. But then again, there are those who perfect just the principle of dasya such as Raktak or Arjun. Arjun was friend, actually. So Raktak and who else? There is another person who is fixed in the mood of servitorship. I think um, many, many, just like Lakshmi. Lakshmi serves Lord Narayan. She's not... And she's not in Madhurya Ras, she's in, she's in uh, Sakya Ras. I mean, I mean, she's in um, uh, Dasya Ras. Although she is the wife of the Lord, she's not in the mood of Madhurya. She's in Dasya Ras, that's mentioned. But that's for Narayan. So... There is distinction between the Rasas, but then again, the principal element of every Ras is Dasya. Okay, Maharaj, got it. So Dasya is the basis. Right. We have to. Okay, okay. Thank you, Maharaj. That clarifies. Yeah. It's always in the mood of service, no matter what Rasa you're in. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Devotees, are there any other questions? Alita Tangi, well, here we are in your in your Prabhu Dada Desh. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my respectful obeisances. I'm so much missing being there, Maharaj. I'm sitting with some of your old friends right now. They're sitting right here with me. I know. Are you any plans of coming to Toronto, Maharaj? My question is, is there any plans coming to North Carolina like today or tomorrow? <laughs> uh, I'm so sorry, Maharaj. <laughs> we are we're gonna send Garuda to pick you up and drive you here. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> but you're so merciful that 
you know you're giving us your association like we are there you are missing the seva i'm missing you know helping shama gauri mata ji and and you came with uh, shiv prabhu who came with uh, janaki nath so five years back i've come so with a different person now you have to you, you have to meet him he's just as good or better maybe <laughs> Yeah, yeah, his name is Prem Murti. He's a wonderful devotee from Croatia. Missing all of your wonderful servants, Maharaj. Today is our first day for classes, but devotees have been coming yesterday. Yeah. So today evening, there is a. program i we are planning to attend on zoom maharaj yeah i'm not sure of the time but it's uh, maybe you know the time more than i do 7 <laughs> o'clock i saw the message it was at 7 eastern standard yes maharaj 7 o'clock thank you for telling me <laughs> So how is your health maharaj from traveling and um manageable it's manageable are you um, th that uh, inmate uh, in the south carolina prison that devotee is he still there maharaj um uh let's see jason matthews yeah he's still there but things have developed nicely for him he's got more facility and now he's holding regular programs in the jails and he's also getting you know people to commit to krishna consciousness hari bol so much effort maharaj like you can only you know pick up a, a flower from such a place no one can imagine i remember you told us a sto his story once when you came and that's what that's what got you uh, got you to charlotte initially and then your mercy yeah, you was, i didn't have any plans to come to charlotte When I used to do sankirtan back in the 1980s, I used to come to Charlotte, but I used to just can't wait to leave it. <laughs> Now it, everything's changed. Just see how Krishna tricks you. He tricked me into coming here. Hari bol. So we should thank him, Maharaj, for giving us to you. He's also. I'm also thanking him too. What's your name? Huh? Kokila. Kokila. I am with Kokila. You know Kokila? Yes, Maharaj. Um, Kokila Mata Ji is very nice. Uh, she is in. Uh, uh, she and her Prabhu and does we, lots of services. And Prabhu is here also. They're the only two who are sitting on the floor next to me. Very good. They're the only ones that came. Huh? Uh, they, uh, I think they uh, very regularly read Shrimad Bhagavatam, and uh, they are in association in the Bhakti Vrikshas. Very inspiring devotees. Yeah, everything you say is very nice, but I'm not happy you're not here. <laughs> Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they, to come there are. Back. You can take an. You know, you can just get online and book your flight and come today. <laughs> Actually, we can't uh, enter for one year, Maharaj. Uh, the visa that's a uh, work oh. permit visa, so we have to be out uh, one year, and then only we can enter. 
how long you've been out uh it's be it's uh, till december 20 so we have like three more months oh all right i'll have to come back next time but i i used to go to toronto sometimes but canada is a little harder right now yeah. i know your dd's behind you uh no no mahara that's a virtual background those are deities uh, from uh, chennai temple sure exquisitely sweet yeah 